Welcome, everybody. I am here with Noah Barron. He is somebody I've known actually for a long time since college days, and he is an actor out in LA, among other things, of course, which I'd love for him to share. But Noah being in touch with all things movie, film, TV, streaming, all that stuff, I wanted his expert opinion on Loki season two and all things Marvel, right? The state of the universe and where this is potentially going. So Noah, welcome. So glad to have you. Thanks for having me, man. This is going to be fun. I, I have a lot of feelings on Loki and season two. This so. is, this is good. There's a, there's a lot to unpack here just so we know, because a lot of the people who watch this probably have no idea who you are. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you've been doing and why you're the right person to be talking to right now. I don't think I'm the right person to be talking to, but that's on you. <laughs> um, I'm Noah Barron, as Kyle said. I'm an actor. I'm a producer. I am um, a business owner of the Anthony Jolardi Acting Studio in West Hollywood. I'm a coach there. I teach acting classes. Um, I'm also an editor, writer, and director. I'm kind of just a hyphen generational kind of guy who lives out in Los Angeles. I'm also a big superhero and Power Ranger fan, as you can tell. Um, I did a web series where I played the Green Power Ranger. That was amazing, by the way. <laughs> it's called Life After Power Rangers. I got David Yost, the original Blue Ranger, and Walter Jones, the original Black Ranger, to be in it with me. Uh, David's now a friend of mine. I have my hand very much in the thick of things in L.A. It's what I love to do. Um, been here for about 14 years now, which is crazy. Had some success as an actor, had some success as a producer. I'm doing it full time now, which is exciting. And that's me in a nutshell. Yeah. So I, I actually have a few listeners that are um, in California or in the film video, you know, space. And, yeah. you know, it'd be doing a disservice if we didn't touch upon, you know, some of the strikes and the impacts that it's had on, you know, movies, films, TV, you know, high level without, you know, breaking any contracts or NDAs or anything what's your high level take on this and what is its impact been on like some of our favorite, you know, franchise entertainment? Um, so there's a lot to unpack. I think overall it was good that WGA and SAG after my union went on strike and the W the DGA, but they got their contracts settled real quick, but WGA got a lot of things they needed and wanted SAG after they're saying we got everything we wanted. A lot of people have conflicting thoughts. As of this recording, a lot of people think the strike's over. That's not correct. Um, the, there's a tentative strike that's over. Well, there was okay. writers and actors. Well, the, the writers is 100% over. But right. sag after my union, acting union, we have to ratify the contract. Now, the variety deadline, they don't talk about this a lot. We vote tomorrow, Tuesday, December 5th to ratify the contract. A lot of my friends are voting no on it because they don't like the AI, AI stuff. And that's pretty much it. The AI stuff's kind of scary. I voted yes to ratify. I'm sure when this comes out, it'll be ratified. We'll be back to business. But in the meantime, we've been, we've been auditioning already. The, the day the strike was over, which is the tentative agreement, we started auditioning again. A lot of projects were canned, for better or worse. A lot of studios wanted to can those projects anyway. So the strike was actually something good for the studios in a way, as they're saying it, because they could just cancel a bunch of shows that they had contracts to do that they no longer want to do. So they saved millions of billions of dollars during the strike, even though my people went borderline homeless. Yeah, so it's it at its finest, huh? It must have been brutal. Considering yes. a lot of this is all contract work, right? So yep. Um, and I saw a lot of things, people below the line, below the line means people kind of behind the scenes, like the, the, um, craft services and makeup and hair and, um, cinematography, right. you know, audio, like these people didn't work unless it was non-union work, which doesn't pay great. So a lot of people have been struggling. Um, it sucks that it happened. It was needed. I'm glad that we got what we got. SAG got a lot of great things. WGA got a lot of great things. I think it's going to be ratified. And from everyone I've spoken to, all the agents, managers, casting, producers, everyone, it's going to be just gangbusters in the new year. Um, things are going to start casting. Writers' rooms are already being assembled. Like, it's go time in come January. It's just going to be 
Yeah, I have to say, I, I have to agree. I mean, ultimately, this AI stuff is not going away. And like, if it had to happen, we got to get this out early before enough, you know, actors and writers get really screwed. I mean, you hear these horror stories of like, some booming show that's on streaming and the writer's getting like 10 cents and you're like, what or the hell? You're like, that ain't right. You know, like we're certainly paying more, you know, with all the subscribers and like, you know, all the fees and ads and stuff, you know, they're doing all right. You know, and the fact that they want to use, you know, even some of the technology where they're like de-aging people or using an actor to stand in for somebody who's playing another actor who's, older but now he wanted to look yeah. younger but then they're doing all this like manipulation stuff it's like you gotta give him credit you know or if you're using somebody who's already deceased it's like that should go to the state there's like so many complicated things with that and we don't have to dive into that but i, I was just curious to hear your your high level yeah. take let's let's switch gears a little bit to marvel while we're here right so the marvel universe we recently had the marvels drop that did not have a good outlook loki season two recently wrapped up that was a few weeks ago um you know looking ahead there's a lot of speculation with jonathan majors the king uh you know dynasty storyline it looks like at least as of the most recent news i've seen that's still kind of up in the air of like how that'll turn out that could be good could be bad i mean either way this has kind of dragged things through the mud but to be honest like I feel like even with Multiverse of Madness and uh, Black Panther, Wakanda forever, right? I mean, I, I don't know. It just, I feel like we're slipping a little bit or losing people with this multiverse stuff. And like, where are we? Like, you know, like for the, for the common watcher, like you kind of got to do some homework to know where you're at. And you're like, where's all the other actors who like started this? Like we kind of went somewhere. Yeah. And I think that was bound to happen given everything that has happened. I mean, look at the infinity saga like that did things that no franchise has ever done i think it's kind of only going to be downhill from there i think it's going to it's going to kind of be like the stock market like i feel like it's going to go up and down when they get to king dynasty or secret wars like it's gonna be like holy cow like wolverine's back to mcguire's back again like all the people all the things are happening but i think until those big ones it's going to be a little like more plateau and stabilization i think the marvel specifically suffered from a few things, which was introducing two of the leads in television shows, WandaVision and Miss Marvel, which a lot of people didn't watch. Um, mm. I also think the strike was a big reason that it, it bombed because no one could talk about it. And then I think oh, well, that too. Yeah. Marketing like, perspective. Yeah. No one could like, it was so interesting when the strike ended because immediately all of my friends were like, Hey, I'm in this. Hey, I'm in that. Like, look at this project, watch that movie. I'm in the Marvels. Like, all these people now posting about the things that they've been. And I'm like, oh my god, I missed this. Like, this is crazy. Now people are talking about the industry again. Um, I also think just straight up sexism, like three female leads, two women of color. I think that plays into it a lot. I know a lot of men were like review bombing the Marvels. I thought it was fun. I mean, it's not Endgame or Infinity War, right? But nothing is really. I no, thought... but everything else was leading up up to it no right. i i think you're i think you're onto something though when you're like mixing platforms of like characters from streaming shows and oh, then okay. going mainstream or if they've been animated and now they're coming into live and like crossing over and there's this sort of expected understanding at this point and like i'm sorry but like you're not going to go to a marvel movie now and and just not know anything prior otherwise like none of this is going to make any sense yeah at all you know, I, I get there was some controversy with Brie Larson for a while, but like that doesn't bother me, you know, because there's been great female leads and male leads. Like, you know, like that doesn't really bother me. What comes down to like, is the writing good? Does it make sense? Because there's like a general audience going to want to come see this. I mean, yes, the buildup for, for the Avengers Endgame stuff, like I, I can't think of anything that's going to top a I climax think Secret of Wars. that scale. I think Secret Wars. Secret Wars is like a it does allow for like kind of a reset a little bit does yeah it? Like, yeah potentially i didn't even think about it like that i just think with secret wars they're gonna bring back they're gonna pay to bring back all the people way more than infinity war i think the question is is something like secret war is going to undo oh i completely forgot about uh king dynasty um, the what king dynasty N no um uh 
what was the other show that missed uh, where we got Nick Fury back? It was just oh, Fury, right? Invasion. Yeah, it was like <laughs> yeah. I feel like that kind of like came and went. Maybe I lost something for some reason. I thought there'd be like another episode or two. The climax didn't really hit where that, I wanted. That to was, be. in my opinion, the worst show Marvel has ever put out. I wanted to like it. That was rough, man. I wanted to, but the ending was like, what? I know. <laughs> I was like, what? Now you have this, like, the most powerful person in the world. But not because they right. they're like never a hundred percent of what the original is, but like close. But you yeah. can just see everybody. I don't know. Yeah. That, that show that was, is a mess. That was a heavy lift. Yeah. <laughs> that was a heavy lift. But um. I actually, for Loki, circling back to Loki, because that's kind of where we, well, we're heading heavy towards. Of heavy lifts. Loki speaking of the ending, the, that is that, quite that's a heavy the transition right there. He's just, burdened with fall. glorious purpose. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen the meme of like, it's like this guy carrying it? You've probably seen the meme before, like a guy carrying up a boulder, and it says like Loki, and then the boulder is all of Marvel Phase Five or whatever, like <laughs> the entire. <laughs> phase i'm like so accurate it, it sounds about right i mean i i really liked loki i thought that the just the whole like vibe design the music like the intro like it was like intriguing mysterious it was cool it was retro you know like and uh bringing in uh owen wilson right i mean i don't know like it's just like cool banter like back and forth right like yeah just the character synergy was really good yep um I, I, I really enjoyed it. I, it it kind of like got a little confusing with like the slipping and like who knows when someone's in their timeline and knows they're supposed to be there. Like started to get a little messy, but I didn't care because I thought the set design was amazing and like the concept of it was great. And I was like, this is fantastic. I'm okay with this. I know this is a different direction. This is kind of like an experiment a little bit. You know, because like it is kind of a different style, it is kind of its own unique style, but I, I'm all in. Like, I liked it. <laughs> I loved it. And I watch all Marvel shows the night they come out. So I'm on the West Coast, so they'll come out at like 9 p.m. my time. That's the show I watch in bed before I fall asleep. So like Loki, I could watch whatever it was Thursday night. Yeah. My wife, Erica, she's usually asleep or getting to bed by then or like doesn't care enough to watch it that night, that day. Maybe I'll watch it the next day. So I watch it the moment it comes out, right? All all the shows. And then typically three to six, nine months later, she and I will watch it as like our show that we watch together. And I'll rewatch everything. I've rewatched everything since the start of Marvel um, besides Secret Invasion, which I don't think I will rewatch with her. And I don't think she'll want to watch either way. With Loki, season two, the second I finished it, I said to Erica, hey, do you want to watch Loki? Because I was like... I was thinking of it. It was one of those shows I was just like thinking about the finale so much, watching so many YouTube videos, like diving deep into the like, you know, mythology of everything that we started watching it right away. So I got to like watch it back to back. And that was great because the things you're saying about the time slipping and like, I don't even care what's happening. It's great. Watching it again, knowing what's happening is so, is so good. And you, I was able to pick up things from even the first episode where I was like, Oh my God, like I didn't even, you get rewarded. Yeah, you get rewarded oh, yeah. for rewatching it. Um, again, and again. I, I, I know what you're saying. Like, most of the things I do rewatch, um, I haven't rewatched Secret Invasion, but. Um, I'm not even fully sure you watched Secret Invasion, according to you. Do you, think you no, I, I did. I was, I was disappointed with how it ended. I feel like it was building and setting something up, um, and we didn't get the payoff. Yeah, that. I don't even know if they were building or setting anything up, but, or setting anything up. I don't know. But um, but Loki's fantastic. So at the end, right, he takes this other choice of like, okay, either we get freedom and die or we follow this fixed timeline story. He takes his own choice into his own hands. It's like, I'm going to use my magical powers to allow all these multiverses to exist. Yeah. So now he's burdened with glorious purpose officially, right? Um Brilliant. Is this is this the is this the is this like Loki's end story here? Is this where Tom Hiddleston, you know, is, well, this, so. is this the end? I think they'll bring him back for sure in a larger capacity. I mean, I don't know how much you get any larger than Loki, but no, I don't think it's the end. 
I've watched a lot of interviews with him. He's been doing it for 14 years. Um, I yeah, think he's coming cool. to play for sure, for sure in Secret War- Wars. And I think in King Dynasty as well. Yeah, I mean, as the god of stories, right? I mean, as Thor. So timeline-wise, right? Okay, so Loki was taken at the end of the first Avengers, right? He was kind of kidnapped and been brought through this whole TVA thing. Thor, on the other hand, is still from that, you know, the whole timeline and Endgame and stuff, right? So if he, if there was a scene with Thor seeing Loki alive again, that would be new, right? Like a new revelation? Yeah, well, the last time Thor, because our, our Loki now is a variant. So the last time Thor saw Loki was when Thanos killed him on the ship. To right. One of the stones, the Tesseract maybe? I don't remember. The time stone. No, time stone was. Right? Um, no, not the time stone. The the blue one. What's the blue? Yeah, one? the soul stone. Tesseract. Yeah. Tesseract. Sure. Yeah. That People one. are going to be watching this, just cursing us out, being like, "These motherfuckers. <laughs> they don't know their stones, man. They don't I know." Have it in my head. I can't articulate it, but yeah, because so okay, so then he's going to see a variant. This is all going to come to. This could be like a emotional climactic. And it's going to. There's no way Marvel's going to miss on that opportunity, and I've even like. He's been asked that a bunch in interviews. Chris Hemsworth's health, though, is still not great, right? Like, since that, when since he found out about his like terminal diagnosis, he's gonna. Uh, didn't you see? Did you see that? Net, uh, was it on Netflix or Disney? No, uh, it was on. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I haven't seen. I also don't know much about the situation. He was diagnosed with something, right? Yeah, I think he will. He could potentially lose his uh, like memory and stuff. I think. I think he'll basically like lose touch with everything he knows. It's something like that. I don't. I don't know if. I think. I feel like it had to do with his his mind, but. Um, yeah, I, I know he was taking a little break he's from not doing great. No, I think he's physically okay right now i think he took a break to spend some family time for a while but i'm under the assumption that he's able to come back and work you know again in the future i just i know that was like something that's now out there uh he has a predisposition to alzheimer's yeah an increased chance of getting it that's awful yeah that's a heavy burden um, but yeah, I, I'm still under the assumption that he comes back, but yeah, I, I mean, who's supposed to lead S- secret wars? If the, you really think they're going to get all the main people back though? I mean, they're so expensive though. And Disney's been bleeding money, right? Like they're probably cutting back on some stuff, not just from the strikes initially, but just because, well, is the Marvel cash cow like fizzling down and i know they've done that with star wars too you know they've yeah. tripped ideas there i mean these are their tentpole productions if they're not i was just gonna say these are their temple now now i'm googling how much did infinity war make 2.052 oh. billion dollars mm. not a bad investment but we all knew that was coming that was like you know, if you could get on the uh, investment produ- production line for that, I'm sure everybody was wanted to be a part of that. Well, like I think I don't. I think Secret War is going to be similar, if not bigger. Depends on how they set it up, um, but yeah, guys, guys, Infinity War budget was 316 million dollars, and they made 2.0. What was it? 2.052 billion dollars. That is globally. Yeah, or domestically. I think that's globally. That's a six x investment. Yeah, I'd want to be a part of that too. I mean, everybody knew that was going to be good. <laughs> think about Secret Wars. Even if they have to spend another billion dollars on people, which is a number that isn't real, like no one's, they're not spending a billion dollars on people. Sure, they spend another five hundred million dollars on bringing whomever back. They'll that's chump change. I also okay. don't know. What- the hell I'm talking about. So all of this could be completely wrong. Aren't they bringing X-Men back? 
Yeah, yeah they already, like a big. That's a big piece, right? Like bringing yeah. all the X Men back, not just through Deadpool, but like, isn't that like a big push of like we need to get the X Men in here, like in the same Marvel universe that we're talking about? The writer of um, Loki admitted that you know that door that opens up in in Loki, like that looks like the X Men chamber. Yeah, that is that's not a coincidence. And yeah, they already started bringing X Men. They've they've played the sting from the what was it? 97 the, the animated show they they've played that nah, 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 four times now or three or four times in the mcu uh. I'm not messing around. <laughs> yeah i can't I mean, wait that, i mean x-men was x-men is really cool and it's vast and i feel like they could tie in the existing x-men stuff but i haven't really i don't know i feel like it could slam dunk so much more than it has historically yeah, and not to say I haven't liked the some of the other newer X Men movies. Like I do, I think they've yeah. they've tried bringing it all together. I can't do what Marvel does. Marvel does storytelling. Like shout out to Kevin Feige if you're watching Kevin Feige. What's up? Like he's done such a great job helming everything. Say what you want about him, he he's crushing it. And like to me, he and Marvel are the missing link of Fantastic Four, of X Men, like. Of Spider Man before Tom Holland, like oh, I'm so glad they brought in the Spider Man stuff. Like, so now it still feels like it's part of the same thing because forever it that just felt so like far yeah. away. I think they're going to do that with everything. Oh my god, that was there we are. That's no way saying. home. Yeah, mm. no way home. Was... <laughs> that third, that third act, man. I've watched it as much as I've watched Endgame. Third act. I. Yeah, I have chills just thinking about it. <laughs> it was so good. It touched on so many things. There were so many payoffs through all of it. Like, oh, it was so good. When Andrew Garfield catches Zendaya, I'm like, man. I had to watch. I had to watch all the his line of Spider Man's again. I I watched the Tobey Maguire ones again, the Andrew Garfield ones again. I'm like, this is all part of it now. <laughs> this is I all part Dude, of it. Now. I love all of them too. Like, I can't pick a favorite Spider Man. I think they're Dude, all. Dude, Spider Spider Man Two when that came out, like. That hit hard. Like oh, yeah, he basically so had he, the entire movie. Nothing is going his way. Like everything is going south. Like <laughs> everything fails. And then he, his face is finally revealed to MJ, and like it all comes together. It's like there's not even any words. Like that's, that's so like good. arguably one of the greatest two of any trilogy. That and like the Godfather are, are hailed as like the best number two movies of all time. Um, are you are you gonna have a camera pointed at these cards the whole time without opening them? No, we're gonna we're gonna go through these. But twenty two minutes of people just staring at. <laughs> well, I'm cards. putting it as a discussion plus. Both. They don't care about us, Kyle. They don't care about us. They care about this. Also, with Loki, what's fascinating is to me season one is also amazing, but completely different from season two. Like completely different, and they. Nailed it on, on in both seasons, in my opinion. Um, Sylvie, what are your thoughts on her? I, I, I was like, for sure, I was like, is Loki gonna like make out with himself in female version? I was like, is that weird? Is that well, like, that's, like sexual? that's how they saved him in season one because of that spike of two Loki's like getting into each other. Um, I no, love but have you ever thought about that? Like, have you ever thought of like if you ran into yourself in the female version, like. Would you be interested in yourself? Oh yeah, yeah, marry her. Take my wife. <laughs> um, I thought Sylvie was fantastic. I loved her in season one. There's something very enthralling about her, and I like, couldn't take my eyes away from her. Season two, I think she was underutilized. Not like I'm not faulting anyone for that. I just think her season one was the character was in such a different place. Season two that I just loved her season one. I didn't. I mean, it was her haircut in season two. I don't know. Well, season one, she was like the main like like issue, the main problem, like Loki. Right. Well, oh, this one it was more of like she's like annoyed that he shows up and like yeah. I don't more... know if we really get a payoff necessarily. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. I mean, good character development and all, but yeah, I, I enjoyed um, season one and Sylvie more, but I really enjoyed Sylvie one, uh, season one. We also know that the um, actress they had to build her a special wardrobe to, like to dress speed in between takes. Oh. I didn't know that. Have you seen the images? She like takes off flaps and there's like a something that just goes like here so she can just breastfeed. Oh, good yeah. for her. Good for her. Good for her. Good Mom and an actin. 
That's I'm like badass in its own right. Yeah, it's really cool. Well, speaking, speaking of her, of devil, did you say so, the same? what? Do we just both say speak of the devil at the exact same time? I think we did. We're soulmates. This is wild. <laughs> I mean, we knew that though. <laughs> so yeah, these uh <laughs> What are these, Kyle? <laughs> Loki cards. But there's a potential to get... Um, no, there's not. Glorious purpose signatures. <laughs> Wait. Uncover an impressive array of actor autographs. Glorious purpose signatures. Deceptive signatures. <laughs> Potentially. I don't know what any of that means. I mean, if we got to sign Tom Hiddleston, that would be pretty dope. Or I mean, Wilson. I mean, it could happen. It, it probably won't happen, but... <laughs> May I ask how much these boxes were? Uh, these were tw uh, 20 bucks at Target. Each box is 20 bucks? Yeah. And there's not many cards in them. So either the quality is really high or there's numbered cards that are quite rare. So are I'm guessing not? these plain ones are like the base cards. Are we not saying that you getting ripped off is also an option? It could be. <laughs> it's it quite be possible. Right. I'm guessing these orange parallels are like the second tier parallels. So if they have a base set of like a hundred cards, then oh, that, that pack sucked. You didn't get any special ones. Yeah. Well, we got this variant security breach, which I think is one of those like one out of eight or one out of 10 chances. <laughs> I don't do cards. What do you do with them? like what once they're open? Do you them do you burn them do you use them as like wood fire or... so i think for i think for most of these boxes in a way it's like gambling because you're looking for cards that could be worth like you know four figures some some cases even like five figures right but they're like stupid rare but who's buying them marvel cards are you crazy people spend a fortune on them really Oh my god, yeah. Crazy amounts of money. TVA profiles, the timekeepers. It's kind of trippy. Vana Renslayer tells Loki the Avengers travels through time were supposed to happen, but his own escape was not. According to who? According to the timekeepers. Hmm. Slash. Truth. Truth right there. Slash. What makes a Loki a Loki? Hmm. Oh, that's when they're watching the meteors. So I'm guessing this is like yeah, okay. Help us That's find right after he was taken, I think. Hmm, who knew? I hope we get something very glorious and full of purpose in one of oh, these packs. God. Can you get to name these streams? Uh yeah. Are they titled? All right, what are we gonna call this? One? I could well yeah, I mean I make uh I don't know, I make like a thumbnail. Mm. Are they gonna say like glorious purpose? They can. Or I, think they they should. I think they should. Alternate time branch. Loki escapes with the Tesseract and crash lands on the Gobi Desert in Mongolia. After he falls from the sky, local villagers approach him. He stands on a rock and tells them tells them he's burdened with glorious purpose. <laughs> that was like kind of funny, wasn't it? Like, didn't he like everyone was like, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, and then he throws him in time and punched him. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, I think, I don't know. They're just kind of like novel and interesting, like Will I collect all of them? I don't know. I, it was more of a curiosity. Yeah. Really. Um, I do know, like, the cards will just kind of tell the story, like, all the way through, right? Oh, this is the same one we had before. Mother. That's a bummer. All right. Nothing glorious and full of purpose at this moment. You got a good He Who Remains shot in that last deck. Yeah, I'm guessing these, these profiles and alternate time branches are probably not that common. Uh, this is a base card. Come and get me. Let's see. Apocalyptic field mission. Okay. Here's another, uh, for all time. Always. I guess that's like, that's what they call them. That's funny. You got End that the... one before, I think. Yeah. The, yeah. The base card. Yeah. I mean, it's not many cards in here. There better be something really amazing in here. Um, we mm -hmm. want to talk about Jonathan Majors. Yes. I so. I love what he's doing as Kang. I love it's it's very theatrical, it's very big. Not everyone's gonna love that, but he's gonna be playing so many different kinds of Kangs that he's yeah. like I think he's doing a good job separating them and I think he's pretty wonderful. 
I would have to imagine for an actor, that's like a dream role dream. to showcase dream. like literally a infinite dream. array of different things. Dream. So much fun. Um, I am always under the assumption of innocent until proven guilty. So all the stuff that's talking about, they're talking about like maybe bringing in Doom and getting rid of Kang. I think it's all BS until anything actually happens. Like, it's all just talk. I, the amount of trades and publications I see talking about things that are so incredibly false. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, I don't really pay attention to most of the slander on celebrities and the gossip and nonsense. Because a lot of it's just to sell sell stuff, you know. Yeah, but even like... Sell the, the noise. But... The, the articles or the YouTubers that are like talking about Jonathan Majors and what they're going to do with Kang and all this fun stuff and like bringing in Dr. Doom. It's all to me BS because it's just people like it's all hypothetical. I don't think anyone knows what they're talking about. Hey, B15. Loki lineup. Wunmi Misako Hunter B15. Hmm. So that's kind of a different card. Let's see. Another orange card. And you have something of mine. So this is the last pack. I haven't seen any uh I haven't seen anything that epic so far. I did like this card. This is kind of this is kind of funny though. You know, she was this minutes. What a crazy! What a crazy character! You know that she was recast in the second season. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, Tara Strong played her in season two. Why was that? I think it was conflicts, availability conflict. Oh, I okay. believe. Hmm. Well, Kyle, talk to me. How are you feeling? What are your takeaways here? <laughs> I don't really know what I have. I mean. I don't really know what this is. There's two lineup cards. There's two alternate time branch cards, two TVA profile cards, this TVA mission card, which I'm guessing is probably one of those like one out of 10 pack things. We got some of these uh, for all time always, but we got duplicates of two of them. Okay. And then I'm guessing there's a whole bunch of base ones, which I'll have to count here, but um, yeah. I don't know. This... What's your takeaway, Kyle? What were you hoping for? Uh, I would have liked to have gotten an auto. That's for sure. What does that mean in English? An autograph card oh. of an actor who was in the show. Do you want me to decides... autograph something for you? <laughs> well, you know, they look, well, yeah. They look like, you know, something like this. You know, Wait, is that a real something. autograph? Yeah. Wait, that's a real autograph? It's not a print? No. It's real. It's certified. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so there's like a certified autograph on the card, and they throw it in. This I one's like numbered, for instance. Yeah, actually, I have a, I have a whole, like, um, God, I have tons of tons of autos, uh, mostly from Star Wars stuff. But I had some other Marvel cards too. I opened Marvel Beginnings earlier. And uh, this was one of the cooler cards I pulled. It was like a saber tooth foil card, which oh, I thought was really cool. Yeah. There's a few other cool X Men cards in those Marvel beginnings. Are these uh, all whatever. cards that I'm seeing in front of this camera? Yeah. Wow, Kyle, dang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should see. Uh, you should see behind me and in the closet. But I mean, we're not I can't there. talk. Look at my background. So. I actually have uh, Power Rangers cards that I have not opened yet. Bro, too, which I that? thought of you. How isn't this the video that we're doing right now? <laughs> because that's like a different topic, right? It's a completely different topic. You you chose to talk to me about Loki when we could have been talking about Power Rangers the entire time. Well, I'll have to get more Power Rangers stuff <laughs> to go through that. I'm also not up to speed on all things Power Rangers at the moment. So, well, I am. <laughs> you know, what is your optimism on where we're going with this and like i love the multiverse i love i know people don't i know what lessens like people dying and stuff because like well like they killed off more people in loki than they did during the entire snap right like in a second when all the branches died they killed bajillions of people which is much more mm -hmm. like i saw that was a thing of like just like that they killed bil literally billions and billions of people but they also created all these multiverses, right? Well, yes and no. They didn't create them. 
they were always there. They had been destroying them for forever. And then when Docs went and did her thing and ex- exploded all these timelines, it killed billions of people in a moment. Hmm. So I think that's that's the, yeah. that's yeah. the argument to multiverse is like it lessens the stakes. Like they introduced and killed off Reed Richards and like Captain uh, Carter, you know, all these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I love the multiverse. I love multiverses in general. I love time travel stories. So I'm jazzed for it. I have but it's a double-edged sword, though, right? Because yeah. some people feel it's a cop-out from a story writing perspective yeah. where they feel they can't write within the parameters. However, I can only imagine how challenging it is as a writer to be like, you need to know everything from the past 15 years and now write something new and fresh by knowing all that. And it yeah. can't interrupt any of that and disrupt any of that. So it's like, you feel you probably feel like you're handcuffed 10 well, ways to Sunday, yeah. right? The show, I think the writer of Loki just got hired to write Secret Wars, which I'm very excited about because he's crushed Loki. I think he's the guy to write it. Well, that's promising. Yeah, very. In my opinion, very promising. What do you, how do you feel about, uh, like, I I think there's going to be some duds. I think it's going to kind of be what it has been until we get to the Avengers. But I haven't hated any of the movies like i hadn't disliked any of the movies so i'm i'm cool i'm chilling no i yeah i'm not a hater i'm along for the ride i'm you know it's like a pizza party as way people have described it in that there's something for everybody you don't have to like the pepperoni slice or the pepper yeah. slice the hawaiian that's slice great. but there's pizza there for everyone i've never heard it talk about it like that but that's kind of what it is right like yeah so you're gonna find something that you like in there i i i you know the the Nick Fury stuff and like you know the original was Miss was it Ms. Marvel right the, that's the one I'm thinking of right I don't know they, Ms. Marvel? they were okay like I don't know yeah I, they were okay I, I, I watched it I was happy it tied in um, but yeah it's certainly no tenpole thing I think for me I would rather them iron out like what it looks like for the next few years, figure out the st- cohesive storyline on the same page. I mean, I know Kevin Feige's done that for a while, but um, sometimes it feels like we're just kind of riding the coattails of the success before, as opposed to, you know, driving a story forward. If there's not a good enough story, then like, let's go back to the drawing board and like figure this out or get some fresh faces in there, but not too many cooks in the kitchen where it gets all diluted. Like I feel like some of the star Wars stuff has, I it don't watch like any of the Star Wars stuff. Uh, you know, when you get too many, when when executives start making decisions on a creative process, you get, you know, a product that reflects that. Let's just put yeah, it that way. But if you think about it, like Kevin Feige is the head of Marvel and he's in charge of everything. He's a, he's a business guy. I guess he is, but he had a creative vision that like laid out for a while. So like, I'm feeling hopeful about that. And I think he's definitely a powerhouse and I can't see anybody else, you know, taking the reins from that. No, absolutely not. I, I wonder how much longer he has in him though. You know? Yeah. He was asked if he was going to do like a Star Wars project or something else. I think he said no, like definitively. I don't know if that's for sure. That's fine. Like I don't, need him diving into other projects like um but yeah i mean with all the the main actors and stuff who's going to be driving secret wars but you're saying all the actors are coming back so i would think so i don't know anything i think i mean tom holland said two days ago at the time of recording that like he might not come back for spider-man 4 unless there's an interesting story to tell but i think that's what everyone says is that a contract move is is that a business move see i thought he had signed up for more movies is the thing i don't think it's an anything move i think it's a move i think it's sincere and genuine but i think it's a way for them to say okay we need to create a movie that is interesting enough to tell and he'll be on board like okay i don't know i think it's kind of an after talk to be like i'm not going to create crap and when they come out they're like i had to do this movie it spoke to me it's a story that's never been told so I have another take on that, too. Do you feel that if they continue to sign up for these projects that they get typecasted into this and then they have trouble trying to get work outside of that type of role? Yes and no. I mean, he just did The Crowded Room, which was on Apple, which I loved. Um, 
he was. But you know what I'm saying, though. You know, you know. No, I do. I don't think so. I'm not saying him specifically, but yeah. like, I could see if you're like tied to a Marvel universe for a long time, kind of like how when people get thrown into Star Wars, then they end up getting typecast in like other. Do roles. they really Star Wars? What Star Wars people get typecast? I think they get kind of stuck in that role and they're associated with that role forever. I mean, look like Daisy Ridley. Like, do you think she's going to be associated with anything else other than Ray? <laughs> like John Boyega, like even if these, even if John the movies Boyega. didn't do well, like even if they didn't do anything else, like I can't look at them and not think of <laughs> them in that movie. You know? John Boyega has done a ton, hasn't he? Uh, you know more than, than I do. I'm just saying from the, average joe schmuck who's like looking at it it's like okay i mean if they can get the work then maybe maybe i'm happily wrong i just i wouldn't want actors to get typecasted that way certainly not because i want them to feel they can do projects feel good about it and do something else john boyega oh the woman king he was in that um didn't see that i didn't either they cloned tyrone that's new this year I mean, he's done one, two, three, four, five, six. He's done six movies, podcast series, miniseries. I don't know what these are. I think they're movies or TV shows. He, so he's done like five things since the last Star Wars. Well, that's good. And what, two Pacific Rims? I don't think I saw that. I thought he was in things. Maybe not. Huh. Well, let's wrap this up because I know you want to eat dinner. But... I do need to eat dinner, my man. Yeah, I can hear your hunger from here. So I'm going to let you go. But Noah, thanks for joining with this. This has been a very random discussion on all things Marvel, but a good discussion nonetheless. Next time we'll do Power Rangers. Um, can you share your socials with anybody who wants to look you up? At Noah Barron. My name's right there. N O A. B A R O N. I'm Noah Barron on everything. Yeah. Grinder, Tinder. Grinder, Tinder, Bumble, Coffee Meets Bagel. Kyle loves <laughs> Kyle. That's my favorite. <laughs> That's just photos of Kyle, like feet photos. It's really cool. Um, yeah, I'm I'm active on Instagram, and as I mentioned, my my web series Life After Power Rangers is on my YouTube channel, which is again just Noah Barron. So if you're into Power Rangers and comedy in the office. Watch that. All things. Love and hit it. me up. DM me. Let me know if you came from this, and then I'll uh, tell you secrets about Kyle. Because I go. Uh, nope. And we're done. Every Thank person you all. who DMs me gets one secret about la, Kyle. La, la. <laughs> Good day, everyone. And they are, <laughs> they are dark. Deuces. <laughs>